Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Car Extra Racing 2 with Brogue Hammer Auto House. Today's episode is all about the Spark ZR. Um, we're gonna go through some tuning on it, we're gonna do some racing with it, and uh, tell you guys exactly why I truly think this is my favorite car in the game. Um, now, I've said that about a couple different vehicles, but uh, this one really is taking the cake right now. Um, in the future, it may change, but uh, if you don't have it, I highly suggest you get this car. I do want to take a second to apologize for my absence on YouTube last week. Um, had some people in town, a lot of things going on with work, so I just didn't get around to it uh, as much. But we're back into it this week, so stick around and subscribe if you'd like to see some future videos. Um, on this Spark ZR, the Corvette here, I have the R&T body kit. Um, they do also offer the missile and the CBW. However, I really don't like the, the way that the missile looks in the front end. And the CBW just kind of looks like a stock body. Um, so anyways, I went with the R&T. It's, it's a nice looking, kind of reminds me of uh, Matt Field's car a little bit in Formula Drift um, here in the US. And uh, we'll jump into, I haven't unlocked any engine swaps for it yet. I do have it upgraded to Pro Drift 3, obviously. And um, my tune will be on the tuning workshop as Brogue Auto House. So my front spring size, 15.2 centimeters, it's a little bit higher than I would typically run on most cars, but uh, needed the clearance for the wheel size and everything like that. Pretty low stiffness, full sway bar in the front. I do that on most vehicles, negative five camber, full 14 degrees of caster and only 65% Ackerman angle, um, slow bump, all the bumps, rebounds, everything like that. Um, if you do want to skip over the tuning session, look at some driving, you can just skip forward about uh, three or four minutes and you should be able to find the driving stuff towards the end. The slow bump here, this is the rear suspension, negative one camber. That's pretty much what I run on every single car. Um, 0.10 wheel, yeah, spring stiffness is kind of in the middle. And then the spring size is actually lower in the back at 12.6. Um, I'm not sure if this helps it squat or what, but uh, this thing really grips up and flies around the track. I'm running a 20 by 335, 35 in the rear and a 2305 in the front um, with a 35% profile. I do have it almost all the way maxed out. Um, the only reason I pulled back the rev limiter a little bit is because the torque curve and horsepower kind of drop off after that top dot there. And uh, I didn't want my drift to end up getting uh, hurt because of that. 0.70 differential, 4.15 overall gear ratio, um, with a sixth gear at a 1.08, which I will say is pretty long. I hardly ever get to sixth gear in this car. Um, that 1.17 of fifth gear seems to be kind of the, the perfect spot to be with it. Uh, braking is all at the front axis. Uh, rear axis width is at negative point oh or point 0.1, but uh, you could probably just leave it at zero. Um, I probably tried to get it back to zero when I last tuned it and uh, couldn't quite get it to exactly. So let's hop out on the track and see what it can do. So this is just kind of some random spirited driving here that uh, I wanted to throw in there and show you guys uh, just kind of the swinging left and right, um, how smooth it is. I am on semi slicks on this thing right now. And I will say that um, I run semi slicks for the comps, but I do tend to run more of a sport tire when I'm doing um, single player and more fun driving, kind of like XDS tandems against myself, that kind of stuff. Um, because it's a little easier to control, whereas with the semi-slicks you need full commitment, full throttle, and if you let off, it'll straighten up and uh, you just don't want that. But the semi-slick gives you so much speed that you get so many more points for the drift that you're doing because how the points are calculated in this game is the speed um, also multiplied by the angle of the car and um, obviously when you're in tandems doing certain tandem challenges, it's how close you are in proximity to the car in front of you. Um, but you do also get points as you can see when you get closer to the wall, um, if you do wall drags, that kind of stuff. Um, and then also, you know, the large angle, ideal drifting. Um, and these are all things that just kind of happen as you start driving and you'll figure out how to achieve them. Um, the highest paying one, I believe, is uh, getting a backwards entry or backwards drift. Um, that'll give you an extra 500 DP on a single um, backy. So certainly something to look at. Uh, here's me doing a little chase run behind an Atlas GT. Um, I'm actually doing the lead and the chase run here. So uh, it's not the best tandem I've ever had, but uh, I figured it was good enough to show kind of what the Spark ZR is capable in chase. 
I got really right up on the door and in this transition coming up here, I got kind of stuck behind him and uh, wasn't able to get the transition quite right. So I fell behind, had to upshift to fifth, really try to ram in there. And uh, I'll show you guys another angle of this here, um, of this run as well, uh, when we play it back. So now that you can see the inside view, it'll be a bit, little bit better uh, perspective of what's all happening. Um, flick it in, we're a little narrow, so a quick handbrake pull to settle that thing backwards a little bit and get it up on the door, we're right there, tires on tire. Flick back, nice transition, get to the other side. And you wanna be transitioning at the same time as the lead car. I know it sounds weird because you'd have to almost predict when they're gonna, gonna um, transition, but here you can see he transitioned, then I did. I fell way far behind. Um, and as a result, I had to really throttle in um, and try to finish up on his door there. So um, that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. I will be doing a top five drift video this week as well. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to hit that like button for me, subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate everybody that follows this. Um, it's uh, been quite eye-opening to see uh, the amount of people I care to watch, what I uh, play and, and how I talk about what's going on. Um, and we will uh, keep on doing that. So anyways, as always, appreciate all your support. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.